How are you doing today? Come on, you do a little better than that. You guys okay? Amen. Man, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Can you sense the presence of God just even in worship this morning? Um, I've come with an expectation this morning. I've come knowing that God wants to do something special here in this church in our lives. And we're starting a new series this morning, but before I get to that, I want to make you aware, if you'd like my notes this morning, uh, you can text the number on the screen, I believe it's going to come up here in a moment, and uh, grab my notes. And there are also, if you visit the Journey Church app, they're right there in the middle, it says message notes, click on that, and you'll have my notes this morning. Uh, before we get into the new series, I also want to take a moment to just encourage you during this fast. So we started a 21-day fast on Thursday night. Uh, I mean, we had an incredible time in worship Thursday night. You could just feel the power and the presence of God there. And I want to encourage you, man, come out every single Thursday night uh, this month. We're going to be worshiping the Lord and just inviting Him just to have His way in this place. And that's really what it's all about. Uh, but I want to encourage you, if you're, it's day three right now if you're on a fast. And day three, day four, day two typically tends to be a little harder than, uh, than it is the rest of the time. So once you get over this hump and all the toxins kind of get out of your body, you're drinking lots of water, you're going to feel a lot better. So I want to encourage you just to keep going and keep fasting and keep going after God. You might just be doing a media fast, and that's okay. Whatever it is you're fasting, keep going. And I know at the end of this that God is really going to honor you for your sacrifice. You know, Pastor Joey, he shared on uh, Thursday night, he said, many of you in this room, uh, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. It's just time for us to tell our flesh, our, our desires, God, I don't care what I'm feeling and what my flesh wants. I only want what my spirit wants. Amen? I'm going to listen to my spirit man in this. And so I'm going to deny myself of what I want, and Lord, I just want you. And we're starting a new series this morning entitled Cultivate. And I was praying to the Lord one Saturday morning. I come here and pray at 8 a.m. every Saturday. And I'll be honest, I'll open it up. Anybody's welcome to come at 8 a.m. and pray with me uh, then. But I come here every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. just to seek the Lord and to pray for the church, pray for what God's doing in my own life, and just let him hear him clearly here in this place. And the Lord dropped in my spirit about three weeks ago this series, because obviously right now we're in a little bit of a different time with our pastor who just had open heart surgery, and he'll be back in the pulpit January 30th as we start a new series. Yeah. Yeah, we're really thankful for that. He'll be back in the pulpit January 30th as we start a new series, The Church I See. But I really felt in my spirit, man, that the Lord just said, let's talk about cultivating a passion and a hunger, a desire for revival in the people of Journey. So that's what we're doing for the next three weeks before we go into our mission. Our, we're going to be actually introducing new values and mission and vision for the church for the remainder of the year. And it's going to be an exciting time. But this is kind of really setting things up. And Bishop last week, he talked about rain in the outer rain. And I believe now is the time to experience revival. That he is going to pour out his rain. He's going to pour out his spirit. Cultivate means this. It literally means to prepare and use the ground. To prepare the ground and use the ground. Prepare the ground and use the ground. So we are prepared. Preparing the ground, I felt in my spirit, we we're preparing the ground for the end time revival. Because Jesus said that in the last days he'll part his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream driven. Young men will see dreams. And that's what we're preparing for, that end time harvest, that end time revival. We are positioning our church for that. But we've already planted seeds of revival. And we're going to reap seeds of revival right now during this fast. Now is the time for the reign of God to be poured out. And I don't care, y'all, what the news is saying. I don't care what it's saying right now. I don't care about this, this new variant coming. Sure, we're going to be wise about it. We're going to listen. But we're not going to allow fear to consume our hearts. We're not. We're going to keep our attention. We're going to keep our affection on him and him alone. 
We're not going to be thinking about the economy and everything else is happening. Listen, God will provide no matter what happens. He always has with his people. We're going to keep our eyes fixed on him above everything else. That's why we're in this season. These next three weeks we're talking about cultivate. We're going to get rid of all the other noise, all the other chatter. We're going to focus our attention on God. And I believe this morning I've entitled my message, The Gift of Hunger. The Gift of Hunger. Some of you are like, Adam, really? In the middle of a fast, The Gift of Hunger? Yeah. The gift, the gift, it's a gift, the gift of hunger. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I sense you right now. And Lord, we say to you this morning, Jesus, teach us your ways, for we want to know you. We want to find favor with you, Jesus. Lord, our hearts and everything within us are saying, God, we just want to know you. So, Lord, would you increase hunger in our hearts for you? Lord, it is a gift. Let us see it as a gift, Jesus. Lord, we say this morning, we want to hear your voice. Speak. Lord, for your servants are listening. God, no one came this morning to hear a message from me, but God, we all came to hear from you. So Holy Spirit, breathe a rhema word this morning and let it become alive in our hearts and in our spirit, Jesus. We love you. We give this time to you as we open your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Elvis. So the gift of hunger. The gift of hunger. You know, one of the most challenging things in this Christian walk is being spiritually hungry for God and spiritually full all at the same time. It sounds like a contradiction, but it's really not. You know, hunger is a sign of health. Whether it's physical hunger, it's a sign of health. And spiritual hunger is a sign of health. If you have kids or you've had kids before, we all know what it's like for our son or our daughter to not be hungry, not desire to eat, not desire any food. Uh, I took Ruth, uh, my seven, she was actually seven at the time, she's now 10. She was seven at the time. I took her on her birthday, uh, in the morning, early one morning, just her and I to the Waffle House. And we were celebrating her birthday. You guys were like, Waffle House? Yeah, we call it the awful waffle around my house, but it's actually really a, a term of endearment. Um, and I took her to the Waffle House uh, one morning to celebrate her birthday. It's her seventh birthday. We walk in. We're the only uh, people there and everyone there celebrating her. There's going to be a picture on the screen uh, of her here in a moment. Look how small she was then. People always told me they grow up so fast, and I'm beginning to understand. Uh, They're 10 now. This was four years ago. Uh, Ruth is about to turn 11 here next month. Uh, But I'm beginning to realize they weren't lying to me. It really does go by so fast. So this is us. I was able to go through my phone, find a date, and look it up. And this was us at the Waffle House on her seventh birthday, and we're celebrating that. You can kind of tell she looks a little pale there, though. So that morning, she wasn't really feeling good. So they're celebrating her birthday. She's trying to put a smile on her face. They bring her the waffle. They put a candle in it. They sing her happy birthday. And then she leans over to me after they kind of celebrated her. And she goes, Daddy, I'm I'm just not hungry. I'm just not hungry. And I said, well, do you want to go home? And she goes, no. You know, she's sucking it up. She's having a smile on her face. And uh, I said, well, okay, that's fine. We'll stay a bit longer. Well, about two minutes later, after I ate half of her waffle, she's like, Daddy, we got to go right now. I'm not feeling good. You know, hunger is a sign of health. When you've lost your hunger, it's a sign of you losing your health. There's something about spiritual hunger and physical hunger. Spiritual hunger, you become hungry when you eat. In the kingdom of God, you become hungry when you eat. Physically, though, you become hungry when you don't eat. Some of you are experiencing that right now, and you know that all too well. 
I know what it's like, and I've kind of tested this in my own life. Just to kind of increase my hunger and and spiritual hunger in ways that uh, maybe I'm lacking in something. Maybe I'm going through a season where I feel like I just don't want to meet with God. I don't want to go and spend time with him. And so what I'll do is I'll expose myself to truths and to stories that 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 I've seen. I'll expose myself to scripture, songs, other things to increase that hunger in my life. Maybe I'm doubting God and his direction for my life at the time. And so I'll go and I'll read scripture about how God led the people of Israel into the promised land. Or how he led Abraham and Abraham just took a step of faith and went out. How he led David and disciples. You can go on and on and on. And I'll read scriptures like the Lord directs the steps of the righteous man. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. In those moments where I'm doubting his divine intervention, his divine leading in my life, I'll go and I'll expose myself to that. Maybe I, I don't feel like I have faith for, for healing. I'm about to go pray for someone. I'm like, man, God, I'm, just, I'm having doubt right now. What I'll do is I'll, I'll remind myself of stories where God has intervened in my life. My sister, uh, during her pregnancy with my niece, her name is Kara. She's now six years old. She had a mass growing on the outside of her placenta during the pregnancy. The mass grew to the size of my fist, y'all. The size of my fist, it was uh, x-rayed by the doctors one week before uh, she gave birth to my niece. The doctors were telling her the entire pregnancy because they discovered it very early. You've got to abort the baby. It's going to kill you, everything else. Speaking death over her, she goes, no, I know God's going to provide. I know God's going to come through. One week before, the size of my fist, the mass was, right? She gave birth to my niece, and the mass was completely gone. Like completely gone. The Lord told, the Lord told my dad that he was a mass murderer in his prayer time. And sure enough, you know what that meant, but the mass completely disappeared. And so when I'm lacking faith, I'll remind myself of that story. I'll remind myself of how God moved. Maybe in my life I'm lacking even my own calling and I'm, I'm doubting my own calling in my life. I keep uh, prophetic words that people have given me that I felt like were from God that I'm like, yes, that is the Lord. Because remember, you can either accept a prophetic word or you can reject it. So I'll keep them on my phone. I'll keep prophetic words that I hear about the church and I'll begin to read them when I'm doubting my calling and go through them. Lord, I, that, the way I'm feeling right now, that does not identify with what you've spoken over me. I claim this right now, Lord. I'll do the same thing for the church. You increase your hunger by exposing yourself to those truths. Here's the thing. I'd like to submit to you this. If you don't set up ways in life to remain hungry, God will allow things if he has to. So you will draw near to him and increase your hunger to be with him. I want to read that again so you get it. If you don't set up ways in life to remain hungry, God will allow things if he has to, so you will draw near to him and increase your hunger. A lot of people say you got to go through valleys and difficulties in life, and sure, there are times where difficult things do come along, but you know what? When you're abiding in Christ and you are consistently hungering after him, those things that come along, they don't really seem like anything at all. It's like you're constantly just in relationship with the Lord, and it doesn't feel like that big a thing. Look at this, Psalms uh, 107, 4 through 7. This is a psalm talking about the people of Israel. It says this, They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. They cried out to the Lord in their distress. You see, God took the people of Israel from Egypt and into the promised land, but they had experienced 40 years in the wilderness. 
The entire time they were looking for other cities to inhabit, other cities to go in, other cities to build. When all along God was taken to the promised land where they had orchards already bearing fruit, they had farms already bearing crops, they had houses already built, they had, forti- they had a fortified city that they're going to walk into and God was going to give them. But the entire time during the 40 years they were looking for other means and other places to walk outside the calling of God. But the entire time, God was just trying to increase their hunger. He was trying to increase their dependency on them, he, on him. They were try, he was trying to increase their humility, their humility before the Lord, which leads me to point one this morning. What I want to do is I want to give you four things this morning about spiritual hunger, which will show you what a gift, what an incredible gift hunger is. The num- number one, the gift of hunger shows that you are humble before God. The gift of hunger shows that you are humble before God. In other words, when you are hungry for God, it shows humility. When you're hungry for Him, it shows that you are humble before Him. Humility is this. Humility isn't knowing who you are. It's about knowing who you be without Christ. The Christian life is full of times, it seems, that are challenging, times that are on the mountaintop. And the only way to remain hungry when you're on the mountaintop, when things are going really well, is to remain humble before the Lord. To remain humble before Him. It's getting in a place of leadership, getting a raise or or job promotion, and remaining humble with who you are. It's suddenly coming into wealth. But you remain humble in your approach to the Father. You know, David, he wrote this. He wrote, bless the Lord, O my soul, and let all this within me bless his holy name. He was the richest man on the planet. And yet, he was telling his soul, soul, bless the Lord because I need God so desperately. I've got to have him. Richest man on the planet, bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all this within me bless his holy name. You know the difference between King David and King Saul? King Saul, he allowed the presence of God to be taken, the Ark of the Covenant to be taken into foreign lands, into other territories, and he didn't even try to go after it. He didn't even try to go and rescue it. But David, as soon as he became king, he said, man, we're going after the presence of God. We're going after his presence. He was the same as he was as a shepherd boy watching after his father's sheep, seeking the face of God. He was the same person then as he was when he became king. He was so incredibly in love with Jesus and wanted his presence above everything else. He was dependent on God, even though he was the richest man on the planet and a king. Why was Israel most successful during his time when David was king? Because David, as king, he went after the presence of God. He was hungry for the presence of God. Spiritual hunger brings his presence. His presence brings blessing. His presence brings blessing. I'm not talking about monetary blessing, y'all. I'm talking about the gift of knowing him. You want to change the atmosphere in your home? Learn to get in the secret place. Is the atmosphere in your home messed up and you feel like you're always fighting and your kids and everything? Learn to get in the secret place. You want to change the atmosphere in your business? Stop treating it like a business and begin treating it like a ministry. It's all God's. It's all God's. Every part of it is His. Psalms 51, 16 through 17. This is the Passion Translation. It says this, For the source of your pleasure is not in my performance or the sacrifices I might offer you. The fountain of your pleasure is found in the sacrifice of my shattered heart. This is David writing this. You will not despise my tenderness as I bow lowly and humbly at your feet. This is such 
an incredible picture of David's humility before God. It's when you're fasting and you cry out to God, Lord, I'm so desperate for you more than food right now, God. Physical food, I just want you. It's when you're Daniel fasting, God, more than bacon. <laughs> Lord, I just want you. More than bacon, Jesus. I just want you. That can be a prayer. Lord, more than YouTube, more than Facebook, more than, if you're doing a media fast, more than looking at a screen right now. Lord, I feel kind of bored right now. But Lord, more than that, I just want to spend time with you. I just want to know you. I just want to know you, God. More than any of that stuff, Lord, I just want to know you. You know, that's my, been my prayer when hunger pains start coming during this season of fasting. Lord, I just want you. More than eating right now, God, I just have to have you. It increases my hunger for them. I, I, I replace my physical hunger for a spiritual hunger for God. That's what I do in that moment. You know, we here at Journey, we're seeking after the heart of God. Well, many other churches, and I'm not casting stones towards them, but many of the people are seeking after just the hand of God, just what he can do for you. No, we're not seeking after what God can do for us. We're just seeking after his heart. We're seeking after God's heart and his heart alone. That is what we're after. Hunger says, I'm a needy person. I'm in need of a Savior. I'm in need of God. I'm in need of his presence. Number two this morning, the gift of hunger makes you stand out. The gift of hunger makes you stand out. Matthew 5, this is the Beatitudes. Verse 3 says this, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To be poor in spirit is to have a deep awareness for your desperate need for God. That outside of God, that you have nothing. Being poor in spirit is a holy desperation for him. It's not the amount of money you have. You can be rich in the natural and be poor in spirit. You can be poor in the natural and be poor in spirit. It's not talking about money here. It has nothing to do with it. Matthew 16, 26. For what profit is to a man if he gains the world and he loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What does it matter, y'all, if you have all the stuff in the world, but you don't have him? If you don't have him, you have absolutely nothing. You have absolutely nothing. We chase after all these things in this life, and one day we might be left with nothing. We stand before him. Yours is the kingdom means you have him. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom. The kingdom is him. It's him living through you. It's him working in you. The spiritually poor, they stand out. When I was 16, I went on a missions trip to Nicaragua. I was, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, I was just a 16-year-old, my father was wealthy. I was a 16-year-old rich kid. I had no idea about the world. I had no, I, no, no, no conception of what the world really meant and what was going through. And I really just committed my life to Christ about six months uh, before that. And I was just kind of on this new journey with him. And he was raising an increase of hunger within me for him. And I went on this missions trip and it impacted my life like Forever. It ch- that, that trip changed my life. I went to an orphanage and I met this kid. And I will never forget this, this kid. He's probably about six, seven years old. I can see, I literally can see his face in this moment. I, can, I, I know what he looks like. And he grew up in the dumps. He grew up in, in, in the trash, trying to seek after food to make it. And they placed him in this orphanage. And because he didn't have a father or mother raising him, he was so desperate and hungry just for love. Like he would get in my lap and he would just wrap his arms around me. I don't know what the connection was. I mean, I couldn't speak Spanish. (laughs) I don't speak Spanish at all. But we had this connection. He can't speak English and we're trying to communicate, but it's still, we're communicating just through this love. It was an incredible thing. I remember his face to this day. He stands out to me. My question is this, does your hunger stand out to God? 
Does your spiritual hunger stand out to him? Or are you so rich in spirit that you feel like you don't need the Holy Spirit? Are you so full of everything you filled yourself up with in knowledge, but you don't need the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit. And this is a state of too, I'm going to be honest, this is a state of too many American churches, y'all. Many have become so rich in spirit, they think they don't need the Holy Spirit. We have become, they will say, we have good enough lights, we don't need his presence. We have fog machines, we don't need his glory. We have all these attractive things, we don't need the Holy Spirit. There's nothing wrong with doing things with excellence and stewarding what God has given you and doing all that. But if that's your crutch... If that's what you're trying to build, you're trying to build your own kingdom, you're doing it wrong. Here at Journey, we are saying we don't care about all the other stuff. We just want his presence. We have to have his presence. It is everything to us. And God, we won't settle for anything less. Journey, will you say right now, God, I'm desperate for you. Come on, church. I'm desperate for you. Come on, we're time, Lord. We're desperate for you. Lord, we're not satisfied by all the other things, God. Lord, we're desperate for you. We have to have you above everything else, Jesus. What's the opposite of this church? It's Revelation chapter 3 in the church of Laodicea. I'm not fully convinced that the church of Laodicea is not the American church. Let me be honest with you. It's verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning and the creation of God. I know your works, that you were neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because of you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. What does that mean? What does it mean to spit out of mouth? Vomit, it's the opposite of intimacy. It's the rejection of intimacy. Lord, if we've ever been in that place, God, we just repent from that right now, Jesus. We repent from any lukewarmness right now in this moment, God. Verse 17, because you say, I am rich, I become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched. You don't know it. You do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. It's when you have so much stuff, you don't realize how spiritually needy you are for God. But we won't lose this hunger, church. We will never lose this hunger. May we never lose our pursuit after God. Because hunger causes you to stand out. How do you know if you're spiritually hungry? You fear the Lord. You fear the Lord. Point three this morning, the gift of hunger starts with the fear of God. Starts with the fear of God. You can't be truly hungry unless you fear God. Let me put it like this. Fearing the Lord is not being afraid of God. It's being terrified of being outside of his presence. It's not being afraid of him. It's being terrified of being outside of his presence. It's knowing a closeness and intimacy with Him. And then when you begin to feel that closeness and that intimacy with God begin to fade, you're terrified of it. It's David where he writes in Psalm 51, 11, Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. David's greatest desire was God's presence. David's greatest fear was losing his presence. You know what fear really is? Fear is faith in what Satan is doing. It's putting faith in what Satan is doing. I heard someone say this. We've kind of adopted it around here. You kind of hear us say this from time to time. We got it from someone else. We heard it and it kind of just articulates what, what it really, what we should be doing. We say around here a lot, fear go, Holy Spirit come. Fear go, 
Holy Spirit, come. Why? Because there will be moments in your life and there are moments even now where you'll think about the news where you'll need to say, I mean, I feel this fear rising up in me. Lord, I pray fear go. I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to be bound by that anymore. Holy Spirit, come. Because where the Holy Spirit is, there's no room for fear. There's no room for any other spirit to operate. So Holy Spirit come, fear go. We're not, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to feed my spirit that. I just want what the Holy Spirit has. Fear go, Holy Spirit come. It's an invitation to, to come into his presence. Those that remain hungry for God have not lost the fear of the Lord. Number four, the gift of hunger causes you to move outside of what seems safe. The gift of hunger causes you to move outside of what seems faith. When you have the gift of hunger for God, you will do things differently. You don't care about your dignity. You don't care what other people might think about you. It causes you to move outside of what seems safe. Worship team, you can come forward. It's the Bible. In the Bible it says, it's the person, it's the demon-possessed man who came running after Jesus. It's the woman grabbing the hem of his garment. It's Peter stepping out and walking on water. It's David completely abandoning himself in worship. It's the thief repenting on the cross because he wants eternal salvation with God and he grants it to him. It's Joshua walking around the walls of Jericho. It's David defeating Goliath despite what others thought. It's Abraham going to sacrifice his son Isaac knowing God will provide. Hunger causes people to move outside of what seems safe. They'll do things they normally wouldn't do. When you are hungry, you will worship him with complete abandonment. You won't care what other people think about you. You won't listen to what you think your personality is. Sometimes it's about getting over ourselves and just giving God everything and worshiping him in that moment. You will share the gospel with that person in the grocery line, not worrying about what they think. And their boldness, you'll listen to that boldness. In the beginning, it might feel a little scared. It might feel like, man, who cares about your emotions to share the gospel? Some of you won't like this one. When you were hungry for God, you will tithe because you trust him with your finances because it's all his anyways. It's all God's. And so I'm going to trust God that he's going to provide for my every need despite my budget's tight. I'm going to do it anyways knowing that God's going to provide. It's giving to the hurting, the poor, and the needy. That's what hunger is. It's going outside of yourself. It's stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's coming here on Sundays, knowing that you're meeting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hunger is when you look forward to meeting with God every single morning in his presence, in his secret place. That's what hunger is. May God give you the gift of hunger. I'm praying for you. I've been praying for you all week that God would give you the gift of hunger. It's a gift to be hungry after him, to not listen to your flesh, to be hungry after him. Would you stand to your feet right now? We're going to go to, into a time of worship here in a moment. But I want your hunger for God to be increased. Listen, when you have an expectation when we come together, when the church comes together with an expectation, God's responds with an impartation of his spirit. When you come hungry for God with expectation like we should come every single Sunday morning, every single time we meet and we fellowship with other believers, if we come with an expectation, the Holy Spirit is going to respond with an impartation of his spirit, y'all. 
I don't know about you, but man, I want to experience the outpouring of the presence of God. I want it more than anything else in this world. I've been hungry for this since I was 16 years old, worshiping the Lord alone in my room. As God set me in that place, God, put me in a position, God, where I experience the outpouring of your presence. God, I have to have it. I have to know what it's like when the people come together and are so hungry for God. They'll give up everything. It doesn't matter what it costs them. Lord, I don't care what it costs me. I pray this prayer for a couple of years now. God, I don't care what it costs me. I'll do anything for it. Would you lift your hands to heaven right now? Lord, we surrender to you. Come on, just begin to surrender to God. Come on, just tell him, God, we need you. We are hungry for you and you alone, Jesus. We pursue you in this moment. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. Increase your hunger. Increase your hunger. Don't listen to your, to your flesh. Listen to your spirit right now. Lord, all we want is you. God, all we need is you. Lord, you would give us the gift of hunger, God. Impart in every single person in this room a hunger, a desire for your presence, God. Lord, we will not move. We will not go without you, God. We are so desperate for you, God. We pursue you with everything, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on, pursue the Lord. We pursue you, Jesus. We pursue your presence, God. Come on, worship the Lord with everything you have right now. Come on, worship him with everything you have. Yes, God. We pursue you, Jesus. If you were, um, let's do this. The, uh, some of you in this room right now, you're just kind of, Doubting, maybe? You're in a place of doubt. You're in a place of... Hmm. You're in a place of just... There's so many... Th you feel like there's so many things in your life you can't pursue God. You can't really pursue him because you're, you're dealing with this and maybe this is half of your life, maybe you've sinned this week. Let me tell you something. You can boldly approach God. No matter what you've done, you can come boldly before him. You don't have to come perfect, y'all. You don't have to come with everything all together. You can come and lay it down at the feet of Jesus no matter what you've done, no matter what you've experienced, no matter what you did last night, it does not matter. And he can impart in you the gift of hunger if you will just say, Lord, I'm going to try this. Lord, I'm going to try this. I told you about when I went on a missions trip how my life was changed, but I encountered the presence of God in my adult life for the first time when I was 16 years old. But it really came from a place of, of doubt when I really look back at it. I was doubting that God was even real because I heard things in my life and I was raised in a Christian church and I said in that moment, Lord, I pray the prayer, Lord, if you're real, you've got to just show me right now. But I did it with a hunger. I did it with a desire. Lord, if you're real, you've just got to show me right now. And I, I've been praying for you this week that God would show you. Some of you, you've been doubting what God, 
doubting a move of God, doubting if God's real, doubting everything in your life, and you're saying, is this really real, or is this this American kind of going after, is it just religion? Listen, it's not religion, it's about relationship, and he wants to restore relationship with you right now. But it takes stepping out. It takes stepping out. If you want to step out in faith, I want to invite you forward right now. Come on, if you want to step out in faith and say, God, I might be doubting you, but Lord, I just want you. If you have a hunger for God, I want you to step out in faith right now. If that is you, come forward to the altars. We're going to go after God. Come on, come forward, respond, respond, respond all over this room. If you're desperate for the Lord in this room, come on, respond, respond. Lord, we're not bound by fear, Jesus. Lord, we're not bound by fear, but only your spirit. Yes, God. Yes, God. We pursue you, Jesus. We pursue you, Jesus.